All right, welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're basically hacking the enterprise. We're gonna figure out how to build a seriously powerful safe storage cluster right at home, but without that enterprise level budget. We'll break down what the home lab community is actually building, what works, and maybe even more importantly, what really doesn't. So let's just dive right in. This is it. This is the question that keeps so many of us home lab people up at night, right? You want all that power. You want the redundancy, the scalability you get from a system like Ceph. But you don't exactly have a corporate credit card to play with. So how in the world do you make it happen? And you know this feeling, don't you? You've messed with it in a VM, you've read all the docs, and then suddenly, that idea of having a real physical cluster humming away in your house, well, it just becomes too strong to ignore. That's our call to adventure. So what are people actually building out there? Well, the answers are as creative as the home lab community itself. I mean, we're talking about everything from tiny little mini PCs you could fit in a drawer to, you know, old repurposed server hardware from a data center. Let's look at a few of these real world examples. First up, we've got a build that's all about being compact, quiet, and super power efficient. This whole approach uses a couple of off-the-shelf mini PCs, in this case, some Dell Optiplex models, to create what turns out to be a surprisingly capable little cluster. The design here is just, it's beautifully simple. You've got four nodes, each one has its own SSD, and a dedicated network link just for Ceph traffic. And what this does is it creates total node isolation. If one of those little PCs fails, the others don't even blink. It is a fantastic starting point for resilience, without all the noise and power draw of a full server rack. But, and this is super important, the creator is really honest about the limits here. This setup has a ceiling. That 2.5 gigabit network, it's eventually gonna become a bottleneck and you will see performance dip as you load it up with more and more virtual machines. It's that classic trade-off, right? Simplicity for raw, top-tier performance. Okay, now let's step it up a bit in terms of performance and, you know, polish. This next build uses modern, specialized boards, and it focuses on pure speed with NVMe drives and a much, much faster network backbone. Yeah, this is the next level. We're jumping from 2.5 gig networking all the way up to 25 gig. And notice the really clean storage separation. Each node has six SSDs just for Ceph, plus a completely separate drive for the operating system. Now, it's not a budget build by any means, but it shows you what's possible when performance is absolutely your primary goal. Now, the third path is maybe the one you see most often in the home lab world, giving old data center hardware a second life. This approach is all about getting the most bang for your buck by repurposing those powerful, older enterprise servers you can find for cheap. Now this is clever. This person actually built two separate clusters, each one for a specific job. There's an all-flash cluster with 2.5-inch SSDs for their high-performance virtual machines, and then a second, much cheaper cluster with big old 3.5-inch hard drives, just for backups. This is incredibly smart. You put the expensive, fast storage right where you need it most and use dirt-cheap hardware for the less critical stuff. So when you look at all these different builds, a really clear pattern starts to emerge. You can save money in a lot of places, for sure, but there are a few areas where cutting corners will absolutely come back to bite you. These are the lessons learned the hard way by the community. This is the key question, isn't it? If you've got a limited budget, you have to know where every single dollar is going to make the most difference for performance and for reliability. And fortunately, the community has some very, very clear answers. Okay. If you don't remember anything else from this, remember these three golden rules. Rule one, your network is king. A one gigabit link will just cripple your performance. Seriously. Think of 2.5 gig as your absolute starting line. Two, don't mix your operating system and your Ceph storage on the same drive. That separation makes a real noticeable difference. And three, while you can start with three nodes, Ceph's real power, its magic, is unlocked as you add more. Okay, so we've seen how to build it and where we should be spending our money, but is it actually worth all the effort? Let's get real and weigh the incredible benefits against the very real challenges of running your own Ceph cluster at home. So on the plus side, the cost savings are just massive. You get true scalability without being locked into some vendor and the learning experience is just immense, but the trade-offs are real. Your network can still be a bottleneck, Cheap hardware, well, it fails more often. Old servers are loud and they love electricity. And this is absolutely not a simple set it and forget it kind of solution. 
But let's just focus on that biggest pro for a second, the cost. I mean, look at this number. This is why people do it. 75 to 250 bucks a note, and that's excluding storage. That is ridiculously cheap compared to any commercial solution out there. This right here, this is the payoff. And here's the other huge benefit, and it's one you really can't put a price on. When you build a self-cluster from scratch, manually, it forces you to understand how distributed storage actually works. You know that complexity? It isn't a bug. For a true home labber, it's a feature. All right, so let's bring this all home. We've seen the builds, we've learned the rules, we've weighed the costs. Now let's distill all that community wisdom into a clear, actionable path for anyone who's ready to start their own build. Here it is. This is your checklist for a successful first cluster. Start with three or four low power nodes, you know, like those mini PCs we saw. Give them dedicated SSDs just for Ceph. Make sure your network is at least 2.5 gigabit. Repurpose old hardware where it makes sense. And remember, you do not have to buy all your storage on day one. Let it grow as your needs grow. And this really is the core philosophy of the whole thing. The goal isn't to try and compete with some multi-million dollar data center. The goal is to build an intelligent, cost-effective, and resilient storage solution that perfectly fits your needs. It's all about smart design, not just raw power. So there you have it, the playbook, built from the real-world experience of the entire home lab community. The only question left is the one on the screen. So welcome to the Ceph Club. What are you going to build?